What's up guys, John Carlo Bodoni here for another video. I'm here with my student and friend Ty. He's gonna help me out today with the techniques. And uh, guys, today I'm gonna talk about um, a technique that is uh, very well known, the omoplata. And we're gonna talk about some of the details um, for finishing the omoplata, okay? Um, a lot of times, uh, omoplata is used to uh, sweep people because there's some very common uh, defenses in the early stage of the omoplata that people deal with that we typically will opt to either to usually sweep with it instead of try to get the submission, okay? So some of the, the main things are gonna be people stepping over you, okay? People rolling out of the omoplata, people posturing up. Those are the main kind of first reactions that we get when we start setting up the omoplata, okay? So we're gonna talk about a couple things that we can do to kind of avoid these uh, things happening and how we can get to a better position to actually finish the omoplata, okay? So not talking about the setup too much, let's just start directly in the uh, in the submission. So I'm over here, I'm fighting against Ty, and I'm able to start locking up the omoplata, okay? So let's first see what the common defenses are gonna be. One, as soon as I lock the omoplata, if Ty does a forward roll, rolls through, scissors to his knees, and comes on top, he's gonna be out of my omoplata, okay? If I get to the omoplata right over here and Ty postures up high, okay? Now from here, that's gonna be another way that he can take pressure off the shoulder and start um, defending my omoplata, okay? And oftentimes I'm gonna opt to sweep in a situation like that, okay? Um, another way that he can de defend is by jumping over my body. So he may just step over one leg at a time or he may cartwheel over. Go ahead, cartwheel over. And then from here, you may hug my head and then start ending up in side control and then put me in a bad spot, okay? So I always tell um, my students or whenever I teach, the moment you lock the omoplata, it doesn't matter how you set it up, if you set it up with the collar, whatever the setup is, right here I don't have any grip on him. I could just could have just set it up in any way that I, that I like to do it. As soon as you do this, the first thing that you need to do is your hand, the inside hand, has to go straight and make any grip you can on your opponent's back over here, okay? Because this is gonna take away that forward roll. The moment I control his back over here, if he tries to roll, he can't because I hold his hips, okay? This is also gonna stop him jumping over my body. So go ahead and try to jump. I can block him with my elbow here, okay? Even if he tries to step over with one leg, okay, I block him over here. So oftentimes when I lock the omoplata, the first thing I'll do is just shoot my hand up in the air, okay? And then go straight down and making a grip on the back. So you can grab the back, you can grab the skirt, you can grab the pants over here towards the back, whatever you can do to control his hip. Typically, I like to grab right over here, just up on the back and grabbing the gi material. Some people like to grab the belt. If it's tight, it's good. Sometimes if it's too loose, it may slide a little bit, and if, if it slides all the way down here to the side, it may give him a chance to roll. So I like to just go straight to the back, but there's a variety of different grips that you can play around with here. So the first thing you're gonna do is gonna look to block his back, okay? Now, another thing that's important is the lock. So off all the time I see people locking the omoplata like a triangle, figure four. Okay, this is the most common and easiest way that it's that it's taught. So we just go ahead and we lock the figure four. I don't like to lock it as a figure four because I feel like there's some guys that are hard to omoplata and they are kind of have slippery arms and shoulders and the figure four just gives too much space over here. Okay, Ty's one of those guys. So from here, instead of locking a figure four, instead I like to bring my foot down towards my calf. And that's gonna give my, let my thigh lock right in front of the shin over here. So I put pressure with, the, with my uh, shins against each other, okay? And so instead of just squeezing my inner thighs over here, I think about pressing my, the outside of my legs onto each other. And when I do that, it makes holding it a lot easier. So when I kind of press my ankles on each other, that's gonna kind of, lock that space over here. So instead of just squeezing the inner thighs over here and having your feet all loose, that's gonna take too much, that's gonna take too much energy on your inner, on your inner thighs and they may 
burn out. So instead, I want to focus on pressing my ankles against each other. And that's just going to close this space without me contracting my inner thighs the whole time. Okay? I'm making that grip on the back. So now from here, how am I, why, why do I like to cross my feet this way? Okay? Because when I triangle, I don't put any pressure on his shoulder. So right now, if he wants to posture up, there's nothing stopping him from putting that hand on the floor and lifting his head. Okay? And then it's going to be a battle to put him down. So the good thing about crossing your feet here is that anytime the guy goes to posture up, if I straighten my legs, see I straighten them while they're crossed, it puts his shoulders straight down. Okay? So triangle, he postures up, I try to put him down, there's a fight here. Okay? Cross the legs, when he goes to posture, I just straighten my legs out and boom, the shoulder goes down. I put all the weight of my leg on his hamstring, actually of my two legs, because they're crossed and I'm pinching here. Okay? And then once my legs are straight, now I can pull myself up and start going to the omoplata finish, okay? So let me just recap how we avoid the th three of the most common defenses. I won't say it's the only ones, but it's some of the more common ones that you're gonna encounter. So there's the step over defense. There's, yep, he wants to go over and go to side control. There's the rollout defense where he goes and rolls over his shoulder and then ends up coming on top, okay? And then there is the posturing up, okay? So these are some of the main reactions you're gonna get. So when I lock it in over here, one, don't triangle. Too much space, if we turn, you'll see that the triangle here, there's too much space, okay? So instead, cross your feet at the shin kind of ankle depending on how long your legs are okay I, I typically like to lock it right over here at my shin and then from here I press my legs my shins against each other and that pressing outwards of my feet closes that gap right around his elbow so that his elbow stays inside my omoplata okay immediately as you lock the omoplata hand goes up and we control the back any grip you can make to control his hips from rolling and the arm blocks him from stepping over, okay? And now, with this leg configuration over here, when he goes to posture up, I extend my legs to put him down, and then I'm gonna use that to pull myself up. I can even kind of create like a little rocking chair motion, and then extend and use that momentum to help me sit up, okay? For the finish now, just turn a little bit die. When we get in here, I extended my legs, they're nice and stretched. You see how my hamstring is straight over here and it's heavy on his shoulder, so his shoulder's touching the ground, okay? If he tries to posture up from here, it's even harder when his shoulder's in contact with the floor, okay? Now the grip that goes to the mid-back, right away I start looking for that lapel, okay? So I can get even more control of his back. So I wanna go all the way around his back and start looking for that lapel grip as deep as I can get it, okay? Don't fix it too much on it, but as tight as you can get it, even better. So if you can get all the slack and control his two shoulders, that's gonna be really good, okay? Now from here, it's gonna be hard for me to finish the Omoplata because I can't sit up with my legs in front of me, okay? So how am I gonna make the transition to the proper finishing uh, position for my legs with my legs straight without giving too much space, especially when the guy knows how to defend well and he's got good flexible shoulders. So I'm gonna go in and my hand, my, my free hand, is gonna grab the tricep right over here. So I'm gonna cup right under the tricep and I'm gonna pull the tricep up, okay? So from this position, I reach in, I grab his tricep, almost gripping his bicep. Like I go all the way around and grip the bicep from the front and I get this nice cup over here, grip. Use this to pull the tricep up and now open your leg this is gonna support the arm, and then I bring my heel down towards my butt here. And now, this clamp over here with my hamstring and calf is gonna control his tricep. He tries to put his tricep on the floor here. It's really, really difficult, okay? So I get this clamp over here. And now, I use my second leg without locking and triangling my legs. I just bring my second leg right here behind it. So that gives it even more support. So I slide this knee, this quad, right behind the tricep over here. And I lock it in nice and tight. And now my toes go on the floor. With my toes on the floor, that's gonna allow me to drive off of the mat. So don't keep your leg like this, because it's hard to sit up. 
drag your knee up your shin, cinch nice and tight over there. Now we can bring our toes to the floor. From here, I look for four fingers in the collar, okay? We stay nice and tight and we understand that we have to control the position as long as possible. The more he fights to get out, the more energy he's gonna waste as long as my control is good. So don't try to finish him right away. If he's fighting, let him burn himself out and then go into the finish. And now from here, we grab the collar and I'm gonna put all the weight into my knee, okay? So weights in my knee as I go forward, driving off of that those toes. And then from here, I get a nice tight submission, okay? We can also bring the hips to the floor, okay? If it's tight enough and the shoulder's far enough on the ground, we can bring the hips to the floor and that's gonna give us even more control and even more ability to lean forward. I like to lean diagonally towards this direction. So my weight's on top of him and on his shoulder, keeping it down on the ground. Okay, so one more time, just recapping. We saw how we avoid the main defenses. So I come in here, I grab the back, okay? I go crossing my feet somewhere between the calf and the ankle, depending on your leg length, okay? So I usually go right over here and I press my uh, thigh, uh, my legs, my ankles outwards against each other to pinch my inner thighs, okay? Now from here, gripping the back, I extend my legs, so I use that momentum to sit up, okay? That's gonna stop him posturing up when I extend my legs. And now the hand that was on the back, I start making my way to the lapel, okay? And I get that lapel grip as deep as I can get it. Okay, now from here, I have to ensure that I get his shoulder on the ground. So I extend my leg fully, and then I look to get underneath his tricep over here, pulling up on the tricep and bringing my heel back towards my calf so that I can really lock this elbow in place, make sure that his arm doesn't slip out. The hand is on the inside hip between my ribs and his body. Okay, so don't let it come to the outside hip. That's another very important detail. So keeping it on the inside over here, almost behind his back like a Kimura, is gonna be how I'm gonna, how I'm gonna get the finish over here. So don't let that hand come out. We pull it up, we lock in nice and tight, my leg goes behind, and I drag this knee up my shin, pinching right over there at his elbow. And then from here, we can grab the collar, and we can start looking to push off of our back leg, and start coming forward and getting a nice tight finish. With the old hey guys, thanks so much for watching the video. If you like my video, please help me grow my channel. Just click subscribe over here. And uh, if you want to see more videos, click any of the videos over here. And guys, if you want to see more in-depth instruction from me, check out my instructional courses at bjjfanatics.com. Us.